In Kiev, this is Ukraine Today. I'm Rahim Rehem Tula, and in today's press review, we'll look at three articles which offer a survey of the latest developments in Europe over the conflict in Ukraine. We begin with a piece from Deutsche Welle, written by Roman Goncharenko, which focuses on Ukraine itself. Goncharenko asks, new Ukrainian parliament, fresh start or off on the wrong foot? He warns that Ukraine's new assembly, which was sworn in on Thursday, is already threatened by discord and wrangling over positions in the cabinet. This, he says, could get in the way of lawmakers being able to end the conflict in East Ukraine or get the economy out of recession. He writes, expectations are high and the challenges are existential. We turn now from developments in Ukraine to look at the bigger diplomatic picture. Ian Birrell, writing for Britain's Guardian newspaper, says the West is letting Putin get his way on Ukraine. Since Russia annexed Crimea, the response of Western leaders has been gesture politics of the worst kind. Birrell goes on to argue that Russia's seizure of Ukraine's Crimean peninsula has now largely been forgotten. He says Western leaders have no strategy to counter Russian aggression and Ukraine is slipping down the foreign policy agenda. He expresses anger and urges the international community to do more because at the core of this crisis lies the basic principles behind our noblest European ideals. The democratic right of people to determine their own futures rather than have such hopes crushed by despotism or foreign aggressors. With our last article, we stay in Europe with Zoltan Simon, who writes for Bloomberg, Hungary retreats from Putin as Orban rediscovers Germany. Simon says Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban has changed course in recent weeks, turning away from the Kremlin and moving closer to Germany on the Ukraine conflict. He points out that Orban this month voiced support for Ukraine's territorial integrity and has called Germany his compass on foreign policy. Simon suggests that Orban's turnaround is in part down to the fact that Germany was responsible for more than a quarter of all foreign direct investment in Hungary last year. He writes, The Hungarian leader is now on the defensive, his record tainted by comments about being an admirer of illiberal states, a category in which he included Russia. He is still trying to find a way to balance his leanings with Hungary's commitments to the EU and NATO. So with the conflict in East Ukraine showing little sign of abating, its consequences continue to be felt across Europe. At home, Ukraine's lawmakers must make peace among themselves before they can bring peace to the country's eastern regions. Meanwhile, European political leaders are being forced to take sides. Their commitment to democratic ideals is being tested as Russia continues to support an insurgency in Ukraine's Donbass region. In Kiev, this is Ukraine Today, and that wraps up our press review.